what we have here is a mini retrospective of my and Kate Erickson's work over a period of uh, about 18 years. Kate and I met at Kansas City Art Institute and she started talking about this idea that she wanted to start doing paintings that were three-dimensional and in the environment. By the last semester we were uh, we, we did our thesis show uh, together as a collaborative work. One of the most important things that we sort of discovered within, the, within our um, ideology was this idea that we as two individuals and having a conversation were the symbolic beginnings of a community. The paint chart is something that we had used time and time again. And one, because it's kind of this cultural entity that tries to capture a sort of place by, by presenting an idea of geography and history, but usually it's very superficial. The project that we're looking at is Dark in That Whiteness, and it was from 1988. First of all, it's a map of Washington, D.C., all the federal buildings and monuments in Washington, D.C., around the mall. What we did is we had a band deck of colors and so we actually took that chart and we walked around and we color matched the granite and marble and the limestone of Washington DC the federal buildings and the monuments of Washington DC here we're, we're not really matching paint we're matching stone but then the paint becomes this thing that takes it back to uh, people themselves because that's what we use to alter our individual spaces or our public spaces. Paint is what sort of becomes this kind of, it, it creates a sense of social space. The drawing of Camouflage History, which was a project that was done for uh, Places with the Past, curator Mary Jane Jacob. We spent a lot of time researching, reading history about Charleston, trying to understand sort of the social economic aspects of it. And we found several things that really interested us. First of all, we found a paint chart, which again, sort of, I mean, that's one of the things that we would always look for. But in that case, we found the authentic historic colors of Charleston. And, uh, and there were 72 different colors that Dutch Boy paints. They had, then we discovered that there was an architectural review board uh, that because of the strict preservation laws in Charleston, which were some of the first uh, preservation laws in the United States to preserve the architectural character of the place, well, there was one group that decided, the one community that decided they didn't really want to have these strict preservation laws. And so there was a split in the peninsula between the historic side and then what was called the old side. So there was historic district and the old district. As part of our project, what we did is we chose a house, uh, one of the Charleston style houses, which was porch on the side. And we, we chose that line between the historic and the old city as a kind of front line in which the gentrification could continue to happen if things change. Things manifest themselves in so many different ways. And what was important for us is that we didn't feel like we were imposing an ideology on communities. We weren't judgmental about particular communities. Yes, it might, we might say it's political, but it's not political in a way that's saying there's a right and wrong. It's questioning the ideologies. I couldn't do this work myself. This was about, two people getting together and creating work, and that becomes something completely different from an individual. I see it now, it's just a piece of, it's a piece of history, and Kate's a part of that as much as anything else.